Good morning, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to 20 degrees southwest Minnesota. It's kind of cold out today. You know, I looked outside and it was pretty sunny and I was like, ah, beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. It's just kind of cold. Anyway, so I want to talk about propane tanks and how a propane system works. Uh, so I have a dual tank system here, but don't let that throw you off. Typically, most people would have a single tank. Uh, these are just manifolded together, and I'll show that to you at the end of the video in case you're interested. Uh, but what we've got here uh, typically is a 500-gallon LP tank. And uh, actually, more typically, it would be coming off the top like this. This is a, it comes off the end, and that one comes off the top for the outlet for the gas. But that's a, doesn't make much difference for how it actually works. I'll show you this one since this one's a little bit newer. So what we have here is our initial valve coming off the tank and that then feeds into a small pigtail that shoots over to this first stage regulator. We're going to call that the first stage regulator because there are two regulators on a typical system, at least in Minnesota. So here we have our first stage regulator. What this thing does is it takes our, our pressure in the tank down uh, to 10 PSI. So feeding into the ground, we have 10 PSI of LP. Now uh, for propane, depending on the temperature outside, the pressure inside the tank changes. So here we have a little chart that I drew out with the more, just kind of some bullet points. 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure inside this tank is gonna be 175 PSI. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, which we hit here quite frequently in the wintertime, there's only 24 PSI in this tank. And at minus 40 degrees, which it has rarely hit in our area, then the pressure of the tank is only 1.5 PSI, or pounds per square inch. So that's really interesting because at minus 40 degrees, you actually would have not enough pressure in this tank to make your furnace work. So uh, if uh, something happens and it's your tank... Uh, and the weather outside is uh, minus 40 for a consistent period of time, uh, you'll have to go warm up your LP tank somehow, safely. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you're not going to have any uh, any heating because it's not enough pressure to push through that line. Okay, enough about the pressure. So, <clears throat> a pressure regarding inside the tank anyway. So, like I said, uh, this regulator drops it down to 10 PSI. Now, we run this at 10 PSI so that we can run a smaller gas line all the way to the house. So this is only 3 8 inch copper uh, outside diameter, uh, but it is well adequate to feed an entire household because it's running at 10 PSI right there and it can push a lot of gas through that very small line. So we will head up to the house and I'll show you the next regulator. On the way here, I tapped off of that same line and I have a pressurized line at that same 10 PSI here next to my garage. So if I want to, I can add a regulator there and LP appliances inside of the, the garage. Okay, up to the house. Now here's our second regulator. So coming up out of the ground, we've got that same 3 8 inch copper, and then it feeds up and into this regulator here, and this reduces it down to 10 or 11 inches of water column, and that is what feeds the appliances in the house. Let's just say 10 to 12 inches of water column. Uh, it's gonna vary a little bit, but that's kind of where these things should be set. So this feeds in. Now, obviously, when it comes out of the regulator, it's bigger, half-inch uh, black iron pipe size is what we have coming in because now that, that pressure is so low that it, uh, it basically it needs to keep a larger size or you wouldn't have enough volume to feed your appliances. All right, so right up here... We have our gas line coming in. Now I did convert to copper here and ran that over to my manifold where it breaks off and feeds uh, things like the gas dryers and uh, my gas range goes that way. Can't really see it that well. Uh, this gas line feeds out to the front deck in case I want to use my grill there. And I, <clears throat> I'm going to convert my grill so that it works with uh, the gas coming in or gas coming from the big tank instead of using those little tanks. So anyway, now we're down to, like I said, 11 inches of water column or so, and uh, that feeds into your furnace, and that's what fires it if you have an LP furnace. Now, I will mention one other system that sometimes is used, so 
Uh, if you need more volume, let's say that we added onto this house going that way, and we added another 100,000 BTU furnace and a gas water heater and who knows what else, but more gas appliances. That one half inch line at uh, 11 inches of water column is not probably going to be enough to feed that additional furnace at the same time as this one. So what you would do then is you can bump it up and turn it into a two PSI system, which uh, you increase the pressure of your regulator outside if your regulator is capable of that. And then you add maxi trolls at each appliance. So you would add a little regulator coming in right here uh, before it goes into the furnace, before it goes into your gas range, your gas dryer, your anything, you'd have to add a regulator. That's all to increase the capacity of your system. <clears throat> In my opinion, I much prefer this because you don't have to have the regulators inside. You set your uh, outside regulator to the pressure that you need and just go with that. But sometimes you have to bump it up to a 2 PSI system. So in case you were uh, looking at yours and you have regulators on each device, that could be the reason so that's kind of the main aspect of propane and how a propane system works. I hope this video was interesting to you and that it helps you out. If it did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I'll put any relevant links I, I uh, come across uh, or think of in the description. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hit that little bell icon to be notified. That would be great. So we'll talk to you in the next video.